In this video, I want to talk a little bit about levers. And there are three classes of levers that we're going to talk about, first, second, and third class. And it's hard to remember sometimes the difference between those classes. So we're going to go through some examples. We'll talk about different parts, what makes them a little bit different from each other. So for first class levers, you're going to have a pivot point. I'll represent that by this little triangle. Pivot point in between your input and output for that lever. So let me draw that a little bit better like this. Here we go. The pivot point is called the fulcrum. Fulcrum. And that's the point right here which is stationary. It's not going to move either way. What we're looking at then is, let's say that this is the input force. I push down on this side. This is called the input, input force. Sometimes it's also called the effort. It could be called the effort. And on the other side, if we push down on this side, it's like a seesaw. This side's going to go up. And that's called the output. Or sometimes it's called the load, like the load you're lifting. So you can see this acts as a, as a seesaw. So what you want to look for for a first class lever is the fulcrum in the middle between your input and output force. Okay. The second kind, the second class lever, a little bit different. This time, you're going to have the fulcrum at the end. The fulcrum moves to the end. So let me try to draw a better line than that. Here's the fulcrum. Okay. Now this time, what we're going to do is have the load or output force. Let me switch colors. The load, the output, or load, this time, is next to the fulcrum. It's next to the fulcrum. And then your input force is over here on the end. Here's your input, or your effort. So it's going to pivot and move this this way. It's going to move the lever arm this way. And it's going to stay stationary here at the fulcrum. Remember that this is called a fulcrum. OK? Now, what are examples of that? Let's, let's take a look at that for a second. Second class, you'd have something like, let's say you had a wheelbarrow. Here's a wheelbarrow, simple wheelbarrow design, something like that. OK, here's the handles here. Here's the, the wheel. And this is where the load would be. So if you think about how the wheelbarrow works, you have your pivot point where? It's right here. The fulcrum is here. Where's your effort? Where do you lift? You lift at the handle up here. So you lift at the handle. That's where your input force is, input, or your effort. And then what are you lifting? Depends on what it is, but let's say you have some yard grass in there or something like that. You have grass inside of that wheelbarrow. You're going to be lifting that up. That's your load that you're lifting. That's the resistance. The load is also known as the resistance or output. So that's some of the terms you'll hear associated with those. So that's an example of a second class where the fulcrum's at the end, the load or output is next to the fulcrum, and then the input is on the far right. Lastly, we have the third, third class. Let's take a look at the third class. Now, for the third class, it's going to be similar where you have the fulcrum at the end. Fulcrum's at the end. 
but now this time we're going to reverse input and output force. So for this one, we're going to have the input force here next to the fulcrum, input, and the output it will be at the end. Oops. The output will be at the end. So this is a much more common example where you're going to be swinging something. So if you think about a baseball bat, for example, just draw a baseball bat here. Think about the baseball bat as it's swinging. We're swinging that baseball bat. This is going to be the output. You're trying to hit the ball with the end. That's the output. Where's the input force? The input force is your hands swinging that bat. Input. And this parallels what I have right here. Where's the pivot point? The fulcrum and then is here. Here's the fulcrum. It pivots at the end. So that's where your fulcrum is. So anything you swing is going to be a third class lever. So to review really quickly, we have first class kind of like a seesaw action. One side goes up, one side goes down. It's the only one with a fulcrum between the input and output. Class two, you have a fulcrum at the end, you have output next to the fulcrum, and input at the far end. In class three, those are reversed. In class three, fulcrum, input next to fulcrum, and output at the end, like a bat. All right, so let's try some examples. What I want you to try to do is number one to seven. Pause the video and see if you're able to label these as first, second, or third based on what we just talked about in the video. After you've labeled them, then hit play and I'm gonna get, go over the answers. So do that now. Okay, now you're back, so let's see how you did. Number one, the, the key part here is locating the fulcrum. Where's the fulcrum? So here's the fulcrum right here. I'll use an arrow again. And there's the fulcrum. So, maybe I'll use a different color, blue. There's the fulcrum, and so that means that one side's going down, this side's going down, and the nail pops up. This is a first class. Number two, this one's a little bit more tricky. Where's your input? Your input's here, your hand is going up like this. The output force is right here, lifting the, the corner of the, the bottle cap, and then the pivot the fulcrum is here. I'll draw it with an exaggerated blue arrow here. That is the fulcrum. So if you have the output next to the fulcrum, kind of like in a wheelbarrow, this would be a second class. Number three, next you have the fulcrum, it's labeled there for you. You have the, the load or output next to the fulcrum and then you have your effort. This looks a lot like what we just did and that's because this is a second class when you're using a nutcracker like that. Number four, here's the fulcrum in the middle. What do we say? The only one with the fulcrum in the middle is a first class lever. Number five, this looks similar to the nutcracker, but if you look a little bit closer, the load and your input are switched. The load and the input are switched. The walnut now is not next to the fulcrum. The walnut is at the end. So this is gonna be a third class. Next, tennis racket. For the tennis racket, we have fulcrum, we have input force, and output at the end, or the load at the end. So again, this would be something that you're swinging. Any sport that you swing something, we're gonna be looking at a third class. And then finally, the wheelbarrow should be been easy because we used that as an example before. This would be a second class. So I hope this little review helped you understand the difference between first, second, and third class. Please um, leave comments if you have any questions about that. Hit subscribe so that you can uh, stay up to date on other videos. I'll be putting out more videos to help re you review on all, all kinds of different uh, science topics. So until next time, thanks a lot.